KTVT Channel 11, Fort Worth, Dallas. With these kicks, Tony Franklin of Texas A&M became the most prolific field goal kicker in college football history. And four other career marks are within his grasp if he keeps up that pace. Tony is also only eight extra points and 12 total points away from conference bests. And he'll be making a dent in those figures today against Arkansas. Thank you, Tony. Studio 4, Studio 4. Stand by to them. One. Football. Southwest Conference Time. Brought to you by Diamond Shamrock. Producing and marketing fine petroleum products and applying chemical and petroleum technology to make your life better. The Houston Cougars forged into undisputed first place in the Southwest Conference last week, and most people think they'll hold on to that to claim the championship. It's a good ball game. It'll be Texas Longhorns 10 to 7 in quite a defensive battle. As we said, they both have tremendous defensive teams. Houston's open this week. They were ranked sixth in the nation. They're the top ranked team among the conference teams, and they do have the inside track of the Cotton Bowl. Well, we've got four games going on today that promise to have a lot of fun in them. Baylor and Rice. Well, Baylor Bear and Rice Owls, they play in Rice Stadium at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And SMU and Tech. SMU Mustangs travel to Lubbock, a much improved Texas Tech team. That game's also at 2 o'clock in Jones Stadium. And Texas going up north to play TCU. TCU. Texas is ranked ninth in the nation. That ball game's also a 2 o'clock game. Everything gets kind of stabilized here at the end of the year. And uh, another one of our TV games. Well, television changed the time on this one. The 16th ranked uh, Arkansas Razorbacks meet Texas A&M in, in Little Rock. It's 1150 uh, at Memorial Stadium. That ought to be a great ball game. And then Houston, as you said, is... They're open this week. They're open. Well, like we said, four games promises to be a lot of action. We'll look at it in a second. Say, neighbor, take Diamond Shamrock Gasoline. You take Shamrock Quality in Los Lunas, Ejo, Coke, Campo, and Wamsutter. Take Shamrock and Chubbuck, Cuesta, and Albuquerque. Albuquerque where? Oh, you know, over the Klein's Corner. Oh. And take Shamrock and Marlowe, Turpin, Uncas, Muleshoe, Goldthwaite, and Hidalgo. Take Shamrock and Deer Park, Jelm, Bountiful, and even Dallas. Is that near Mesquite? I tell you, friends, take Diamond Shamrock Gasoline, and you've got yourself real performance. <laughs> A lightweight motor oil lubricates as soon as you start your engine, and that's good, but it thins out at high temperatures. A heavyweight oil takes a while to get started, but it hangs in there when the engine warms up, and that's good. Shamrock Equiflow 10W40 combines what's good of both. Works like a light oil when you start, like a heavier oil after you get going. For year-round engine protection, use the never-too-thick, never-too-thin oil. Shamrock Equiflow. The Baylor Bears are going to be taking their uh, circus, aerial circus, up to, uh, that's not quite right. It's not really an aerial circus. they got a, a really good ground game. I think we said earlier this year they're, they're a pretty balanced ball club. At one time in the year, they were equal in rushing and passing. But Rice. Rice is an aerial circus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, David Hauser of Rice, he's, I think he's eight catches away become, from becoming the second all-time Southwest Conference receiver and just 16 away from catching Mike Renfro to be the all-time leader. Well, that game's going to take place in Houston, Baylor and Rice, and this is the Rice Owls' last home game, isn't it, Frank? That's right, Gary. For 16 Rice seniors, today's game will be the final time they take the field in Rice Stadium. And these men will be out to put on a good performance for the final time before the home crowd. But it won't be only seniors who'll be trying to light up the scoreboard since Randy Hurdle, a sophomore, is going to come out throwing. Here, connecting with Bob Roran, another Owl who has more playing time ahead. Roran grabs another hurdle pass, good for 10 yards, and another first down. Bo is number 29. Another pair of underclassmen get in on the throwing axe. Sophomore quarterback Robert Hoffman, number 12, and freshman running back Weldon Meeks, number 21. Meeks has pretty good speed to the outside. Meeks is the second leading rusher for the Owls here on a 16-yard gainer. Weldon is a freshman from Fort Worth, Wyatt. In a pass-oriented offense, Meek fits the mold with 20 pass receptions to go along with his rushing totals. And just to show you how pass-minded the Owls are, this 20-yard rush by fullback Calvin Fance is the longest run from scrimmage this year for the Owls. One Rice senior who will have to watch today's game from the sidelines is number 31, Don Parrish. 
one of the Al co-captains who came up with this diving interception against SMU, but suffered a broken finger late in the ball game. Had corrective surgery, and it put his season and career to an end at Rice. Well, today against the Owls, Baylor quarterbacks will be concentrating in getting the ball to their own receivers. And they have a fine selection to throw to. Here, Steve Smith connects with Robert Radar Holt, one of Holt's 17 receptions this year. The sophomore wide receiver has been a steady contributor to the passing attack for Baylor and is sure to be giving the Rice secondary a workout this afternoon. Radar has it. Avoiding costly interceptions will be a prime objective today. And Robert Mitchell, number 81, a 6-6 target that'll be easy to spot downfield. The Houston Worthing first-year man has come up with several big grabs for Coach Grant Taft's team. Another man who'll figure in the action is tight end Ronnie Lee, number 82. Coach Taft feels he's the finest at his position in the nation. And although usually plagued by double coverage, Ronnie worked his way into the end zone for this touchdown against Arkansas. Well, it's beginning to seem like Baylor has an endless supply of fine running backs. And the latest is number 21, Anthony Laws. He's a junior from Dallas Adamson. Laws picked up good yardage on that screen and then breaks an inside reverse right up the middle for 10 more big yards. Tony is listed as the starting fullback today against Rice. So it looks like this junior's time has arrived. Tony Laws of Baylor. Well, Walter Abercrombie, the Waco freshman, seems to have a patent on the Statue of Liberty play. He's run it before, and Coach Taft called his number twice last week with similar results. He carries this one 22 yards behind great blocking from tackle Ron Barnes, number 57. The person keeping defensive statistics for the Bears has a relatively easy job. Just give credit for the tackles to number 63, Mike Singletary, and you'll be right most of the time. Singletary has been credited with an almost unbelievable 204 stops and has recorded 30 or more tackles in three games this season. Here, getting help from Gary Don Johnson, number 76, another mainstay of the defensive front. Averaging nearly 22 tackles per game, Singletary is obviously the leader of the hard-hitting Baylor defense. Teaming with him at another linebacker slot is senior Jerry Harrison, number 39. Ever alert, Harrison turns this Arkansas error into another turnover. And you can imagine if the Owls fumble this afternoon, number 39 will likely be there to claim it for the green and gold. Let's watch him here being aided by number 49, Lester Ward. Ward makes the tackle. Jerry Harrison, number 39, and Andrew Mellentree, number 89, also into the stop. Besides Harrison and Singletary, there are a host of other tough hombres lining up defensively for the Bears. Andrew Mellentree, whom we mentioned a moment ago, is in on another stop along with Ricky Rand, number 48. The Owls love to go to the air, but when they do, they'll have to deal with the likes of number 40, Tony Green. The senior from San Antonio picks this one off from Kevin Scanlon. It's a pretty safe bet that the air will be full of footballs this afternoon at Rice Stadium when the Rice Owls and the Baylor Bears seek to salvage something from the 1978 football season. said and done, it's action that produces food. Diamond Shamra. What we do helps produce food. A lot of the attention this week's uh, focused on the A&M Arkansas game with it being shifted to a TV game, but we have a really unusual thing in the SMU uh, Tech game. I love it. Well, the SMU Tech game is going to be involved with the statistical leaders in the conference. It's real interesting that James Hadnot of uh, Tech is leading in rushing and tandem offense, and SMU's Mike Ford is leading in passing and total offense. And uh, Emmanuel Talbert of SMU leads the conference in receiving. Bill Adams of Tech leads in scoring. D.K. Perry of SMU in punt returns. And uh, SMU's David Hill. It leads in interceptions, and Mario Buford of Tech leads in punting. So that is a lot of individual leaders, I would think. Here's a tip to the concessionaires in Lubbock. Sell record books, not programs. <laughs> that game will be in Lubbock's Jones Stadium between the SMU Mustangs and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The much-improved Texas Tech Red Raiders of Coach Rex Dockery host SMU's Mustangs today at Jones Stadium. 
Leading the Tech Ground attack, none other than the Southwest Conference's only 1,000-yard rusher this season, James Hadnock. The 240-pound fullback rambled for 164 yards last week, raising his season's total to 1,025. His fourth straight game with over 100 yards rushing and enabled the junior from Jasper to become only the second Tech runner to rush for over 1,000 yards in a season. The conference's youngest starting quarterback is also the league's second leading total offense gainer. He's 18-year-old Ron Reeves, number 12, who's generated an average of over 173 yards a game. And when you watch his poise, you'll see why. The Lubbock freshman shows a lot of poise as he uses his primary receivers as well as any veteran quarterback in completing over 50% of his passes. 6'2", 210 pounds, a lot of zip on the ball. His timely rushes are as effective as his passes, and we'll watch him turn what could easily have been a sack into a 10-yard game. Averaging five and a half yards in offensive play is Ron Reeves of Texas Tech. The Raiders, incidentally, are working on a four-game winning streak. As a matter of fact, if Texas Tech continues to play this kind of football, Rex Dockery may be in line for Coach of the Year honors. And this young freshman has been a big help to him. Defensively, senior linebacker Don Kelly, number 43, shows his mobility and strength. An experienced performer on a relatively young team, Kelly was responsible for three quarterback sacks last week, resulting in nearly 20 yards loss. The former high school fullback will need to continue this excellent pass pressure today if the Raiders want to stop or slow down the nation's second leading passer, Mike Ford of SMU. Don Kelly is due to help a lot. Well, we were talking a moment ago about talented freshmen. Certainly, we couldn't talk about them without mentioning defensive tackle Harvey Armstrong, number 75 of SMU. He'll be just one to watch today as the Mustangs face Texas Tech at Lubbock. Let's watch also junior nose guard Charles Tweedy Hunt, number 61, who together with Armstrong caused enough problems to last Rice quarterback Randy Hurdle the rest of the year. Complementing the SMU line has been number 34, cornerback John Simmons, a sophomore from Little Rock who started several games during his freshman season. Here with a fine interception. A help to any defense would be Ken Rosenthal's coffin corner putting. Watch the bouncing ball, bounce out of bounds, inside the Rice one yard line, ouch. Offensively, the running of Darrell Turner can do nothing but aid the already great SMU passing attack. A little consistency is needed, but the potential is there. Watch Turner again. Talbert in motion. Turner takes it down for six points. Talking about the many talented freshmen in the Southwest Conference wouldn't be complete without talking about number 24, Charles Lewis. This is a freshman from Burke Burnett who rushed for a game high 91 yards on 18 carries. But the big story at SMU continues to be quarterback Mike Ford, continuing his assault on passing charts all over the country. The Mesquite sophomore has completed 57% of his passes for over 2,500 yards, 15 touchdowns. Leads the nation in total offense with over 277 yards a game. Ford has had four 300-yard games, been below 280 yards only twice, once against Texas. His primary receiver, wingback Emmanuel Tolbert, is the only Southwest Conference player to average over 100 yards a game in receptions. The nation's second leading receiver is averaging 105 yards a game. Mike Ford to Emmanuel Talbot. Truly the class of the pass in the Southwest Conference. Coming back to you, Terry. Instantly, I've noticed a little resemblance between you and Mike Ford. I don't even think he's ever even seen me in my helmet. How can he say that? I know he's never seen your pass completion record. <laughs> Mike, that's not bad. I'll take it. <laughs> Texas and TCU is coming up this weekend, and the Longhorns are showing a kind of uh, uh, the, the results of diversity in your offense. Well, you know, last year, of course, they had Earl Campbell just led everybody in the world. I, I use all world, wouldn't he? But uh, this year, it's amazing. A freshman substitute backup, whatever you want to call him, quarterback. Donnie Little is the leading rusher on the Texas Longhorn backfield. They've had so many backs, whether they're seniors, juniors, freshmen. They've got a young ball club. They've... Coach Fred Akers just puts a lot of different things in that backfield. I think uh, Coach Akers' surest way to make a gain on a run is to put Donnie into pass. He likes to <laughs> scramble so well. As we'll see in a second. We sure will. In Fort Worth, TCU Horned Frogs against the Texas Longhorns. Here's Frank. Well, with the Cotton Bowl now almost out of reach, talk around the Texas camp is centered around winning all remaining games to assure the Horns a postseason appearance. No one wants that more than senior quarterback Randy McEachern, number six, shown here running for 12 big yards and a first down. 
the senior from Pasadena, Randy McEachern. A.J. Jones, the freshman from Youngstown, Ohio, has emerged as the Longhorns' most productive runner of late. In the all-important game with Houston last week, the 6'1", 195-pound back led all rushers with 94 yards on 22 carries and scored Texas' only touchdown. One of the most highly recruited high school running backs in the country last year, number 24, A.J. Jam Jones of the University of Texas. Number 38, Big Leroy King, a 6'2", 215-pound running back, also provided some thrills. On only seven attempts, the junior from Weimar ran for 60 yards. That's almost nine yards a carry. When the Longhorns are unable to move the ball, look for another first-year man, Donnie Little, to enter the scene. The Dickinson freshman is Texas' top rusher with 335 yards on 63 carries. Now, that average is out to better than five yards per play. His passing has improved greatly. As shown here, throwing to freshman tight end Lawrence Sampleton, number 87. A couple of fine first-year performers who are sure to be heard from at 40 Acres for several seasons to come. Donnie Little and Lawrence Sampleton. Sampleton is a big guy, six feet, six inches tall. Matter of fact, there's another pretty big guy, Leonard Mitchell, going up in an attempt to block the pass, but Sampleton pulls it down from Donnie Little. Due to a knee injury suffered in the first quarter of the Houston game, middle linebacker Lance Taylor has been lost for the season. Taylor, shown here, recovering a fumble after a Steve McMichael hit, has a year remaining and should return in 1979. Defensive end Dwight Jefferson's usual pressure forces yet another bad pitch out, while linebacker Robin Sendline, number 60, backs him up with a stop. Strong safety Ricky Churchman is tough and aggressive. The junior from Pearland always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Ricky Churchman, strong safety for the University of Texas Longhorns. Watch him turn in another fine defensive gem. This is pressure football at its best. And nobody does it better than Ricky Churchman of the University of Texas. Coach F.A. Dry's TCU Horn Frogs haven't had an easy game this year. And they won't have one today with the Longhorns at 2 o'clock. Number 58, Wesley Roberts and company, will need a total team effort to upset the bowl-minded Longhorns. Roberts, a 6'5", 245-pound lineman from Amarillo, teams up with number 22, cornerback Al Futrell, to stop tech runner James Hadnot for a loss. Futrell later came up with this pass interception of a Ron Reeves pass intended for Brian Nelson. Fine position by Futrell. John Wade, number 88, a line mate of Roberts at defensive end, has been a solid performer for the TCU defense this season. Only a sophomore, Wade has a bright future ahead of him. Offensively, Steve Bayou, the senior quarterback from Bedford, ranks as the Southwest Conference's third leading passer, an experienced player who knows when to run for a much-needed first down yardage when he needs to. We've called Bayou's number many times this season, but the fine senior has certainly been an impressive performer for Coach F.A. Dry. He scrambles extremely well also. Well, something old combined with something new. Freshman quarterback Steve Stamp, number 10. A bright future, although not listed among the top four quarterbacks at the beginning of the year. A fine-looking youngster who'll be seeing plenty of action before his career is over at TCU. Let's watch Stamp one more time. Fine play action. Right on the money with this pass. The Horn Frogs tight end Brad Bowen is on the receiving end. And let's take a look at another fine Horn Frog performer. Craig Richardson, number 18, has emerged as one of the Southwest Conference's top punt returners. Here he races 30 yards with a return, giving the offense valuable field position from which to work. Watch some fancy footwork here by Craig Richardson. It'll be the TCU Horn Frogs and the Longhorns today at 2 in Fort Worth. Got a trail, my friend. Across the boondocks, across the lake. Keeper Jennin with Shamrock Boat and Trail Motor Oil, specially made for use in two cycle engines. Works great in automatic lube systems or pre mixed with fuel. Measurements right on the bottom. Shamrock Boat and Trail Motor Oil. It's big with little engines. The game was in Little Rock at 7.30 tonight, but now it's in Little Rock at 11.50. Yeah. It's on TV. So. And it's going to be kind of a shootout between quarterbacks, right? Well, I think running backs, too. Yes, you're right, with Mike Mosley and, and uh, Ron Calcagney. We know how great they are. But also, don't forget uh, 
Curtis Dickey of A&M and uh, Ben Cowens of, of Arkansas, two of the greatest running backs in the conference. It's going it's to have a lot of offensive fireworks. Bo it. Both of them have a way of making themselves <laughs> unforgettable whenever it comes to the football field. Well, you know, Ben Cowens he has a good chance of breaking Dickey Morton's school career rushing record today. He just, he needs only 30 yards, and I don't think there's been anybody ever holding him to 30 yards. <laughs> I, think, I think you pick up 30 yards in a wind sprint. <laughs> well, as we said, on television, today in Little Rock, Arkansas and A&M. Well, the Arkansas Razorbacks will be trying to slow down the Aggies today, who are leading the conference in offense. One Razorback sure to be up to the challenge is Jim Howard, number 54. Anybody who can handle Baylor's fine tight end Ronnie Lee isn't about to be intimidated. From his defensive end slot, Howard finds himself in situations where he not only has to play tough, but play smart as well. Finding himself in the middle of an opponent's screen pass, Howard makes the interception and heads upfield. Howard started his Arkansas career as a fullback, but it's clear he's found his true calling on defense, with teammates Hampton, number 86, and Jimmy Walker, number 75. An Arkansas coach once said that Howard plays with more ability than he has. But you can be sure that nobody shortchanged this Denver, Colorado native in the talent department. Christmas came a little bit early this year for linebacker Mike Massey, number 48, as he was the recipient of an unexpected gift against Baylor. After a solid hit by teammate Dan Hampton, Massey has the loose ball pop right into his hands for a fumble recovery. Those kinds of plays takes lots of luck, but Massey won't be needing much today against the Aggies. Although he's been sharing time with Kevin Scanlon, Ron Cal Cagney is still the man that makes the show run for the Hogs. The second leading scorer for Arkansas this year, Cal Cagney also ranks high in career total offense. An old friend is welcomed back into the Arkansas lineup last week, wide receiver Donnie Bobo, number 44. He saw his first action of the year since undergoing surgery in preseason. Bobo could not have sat out the rest of this year and elect to be redshirted since he had to wear a red shirt his freshman year also due to an injury. Donnie had three catches in his 1978 debut, and you can be sure the Arkansas offense welcomed back Donnie Bobo. Another fine receiver from the passing arm of Ron Calcagney is number 27, Bobby Duckworth. The Razorbacks have moved the ball consistently through the air in 1978. A couple of other names that have to be remembered when you're talking about Arkansas records too. Jerry Eckwood, number 43. Now Arkansas's fifth leading rusher and seventh in career tandem offense. A fine receiver and runner, Jerry Eckwood is going to be putting the Aggies to the test today. Eckwood is particularly valuable when the Razorbacks get close to the opponent's goal line. And while there are no guarantees, when Ben Cowens, number 28, picks up his 31st yard today, he'll pass Dickey Morton as the all-time leading ground gainer in hog history. Two-time all-conference star Ben Cowens. Well, these Aggies will have a lot to be cheering about today since one of their own has kicked himself into the NCAA record book for the 16th time. Tony Franklin, number one, is now number one in field goals made, attempted, and points scored kicking for the career. Even with all these records, the kick that put him over the top had special meaning to Tony. Franklin knew the records would come with time, but for the first time, he was called into a game in the final minute where his kick would win it for the Aggies. As usual, he responded with his perfect boot through the uprights, winning the game for the Aggies and a spot for himself in the NCAA record book that he may hold on to for a long, long time. It's hard to tell that if the eye formation was made to accommodate Curtis Dickey or if Dickey was meant to operate out of that set. But either way, the combination has proven very successful. In his first start since Coach Tom Wilson shifted to the eye, Dickey responded with 33 carries for nearly 150 yards. Even when things went wrong, as they did momentarily on that fumble, they turned out fine for Dickey. For his career, Curtis has averaged less than 15 carries a game, but now seems certain to get his hands on the ball much more frequently, either on the ground or via the pass, as he does on this screen from Mike Mosley. Curtis Dickey, the Bryan Jr., whose name appears three times on the list of the top ten single-season rushing totals in A&M history. Well, the switch to the eye hasn't bothered quarterback Mike Mosley either. Here he hits tight end Phillip Simpson, a junior, for a score. Simpson only has two catches this season, but both have been in the end zone. The passing attack opened up nearly 200 yards against SMU, and you can be sure that the Aggies will use the aerial game today against Arkansas. Russell McKeska, the big tight end from Temple, number 81, will definitely be a factor. McKeska caught six passes against SMU and is one of Mosley's favorite targets. Watch the big senior from Temple work the sidelines on this pass from Mosley, who incidentally is completing about 60% of his shots. Another clutch receiver for AM is split end Doug Teague. Earlier, Teague and Gerald Carter had alternated, but with a two-receiver offense, both are on the field at the same time. And Teague will undoubtedly be making more grabs like this one against the Razorbacks this afternoon. And defensively for the Aggies, Jacob Green, number 77. 
Back again to pressure Ron Calcagni. Here doing the same against Mike Ford. Green has four blocked passes to his credit so far this year, and will be looking for number five today. Teaming with Green will be another stout defender, Dan Davis, number 21. Here, the freshman puts the stop on another fine number 21, Emmanuel Talbert. It looks like the whole Aggie secondary knew where this pass was heading. Safety Carl Grulick was the one who stepped in to make the interception. They'll all be getting a workout today against the Hogs in Fayetteville. <laughs> said and done, it's action that produces energy. Shamrock. What we do produces energy. I don't care what Frank Fallon says, that game's going to be in Little Rock, not in Fayetteville. But then I didn't think you looked like Mike Ford either. You don't think I'm six foot three or <laughs> I just don't think you look like Mike <laughs> thank Ford. You, thank you, thank you. At that. Let's instead go to the answer to our trivia question this week, in which Terry tells us which school has played the guest spot in the Cotton Bowl more than any other NCAA team. Well, actually, the honor belongs to the Alabama Crimson Tide. They went there in 1942. They beat Texas A&M 29-21 uh, to 21 that year. They've been there four times. Uh, several has been there three times. They've been there four. And that, that's the only game they lost. Uh, they won, excuse me, it was in 42. They lost to Jess Neely's Rice House in, in uh, 54. And then they lost to Gene Stallings, Texas A&M in 68, and to Darrell Rolls, Texas Longhorns in 73. So, you know, Texas has the honor of being the host for 16 years that they have hosted at Cotton Bowl. That's, that, that's a record. Well, now, let's just make this a natural lead into a little bit of Cotton Bowl speculation here. Well, the Cotton Bowl, the speculation is not that much. The Houston Cougars have the inside track. Uh, they have no losses. Uh, they beat Texas. Texas has one loss. Everybody else has at least two. So they're probably, unless something drastic happens, they'll host the Cotton Bowl. Who will be their opponent? I, I think it might be Alabama Crimson Tide for a fifth time. It's hard to say. Uh, tonight at 6 o'clock is when they issue the official invitations. That's when we'll learn what's going to happen. I think Penn State will probably go play Nebraska in the Orange Bowl. You know, and So it's going to be good, but I think we'll have Arkansas, A&M, Houston, Texas. Well, they'll all be in the bowl game somewhere. Well, we've got four games coming up this afternoon. Let's look at those real quick. All righty. The Baylor Bears and the Rice Owls play at 2 o'clock at Rice Stadium. SMU travels to Lubbock to meet Texas Tech at 2 o'clock. TCU hosts the 9th-ranked Texas Longhorns at 2 p.m. And 16th-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks meet Texas A&M in Little Rock, as we said, at 11.50 on television. Hope you get a chance to go to one of these fine games. We'll be looking forward to seeing you here next week. I'm Gary Pickle. And I'm Terry Young. Please join us. <laughs>